All right, I'm going to start out with a quick story. I'm from the Bay Area, and my first year at UCLA, I had a very traumatic experience with Mother's Day. I was supposed to make it home by Friday night to surprise my mom, but like most university students, the week of, I did not plan ahead and still did not have a way to get home. I couldn't drive because I didn't have a car. I couldn't fly because it was way out of my budget. I didn't want to take the bus because it was pretty inconvenient and unreliable. I wanted to carpool, but I didn't really know how. Needless to say, I ended up missing Mother's Day that year, and I've not heard the end of it since. But I realized that I wasn't the only one with this problem. In fact, across the US, independent Facebook groups were popping up for the sole purpose of carpooling with others in their community. Adds up to over 10 million users across the nation. And on the other side, 81% of Americans are driving alone, which adds up to over 404 million empty seats in the road every single year. That's 404 million missed opportunities. So people are looking for rides. Drivers have extra space. Swift connects the two. Swift is a community carpool app that matches drivers with extra space with riders who want to go to the same place. So unlike Lyft and Uber, which are these taxi for hire services, we take advantage of space and cars that are already out there on the road. We specialize in long distance and event space travel. It's an easy process. You download the app, you can create a profile, add in a bio, picture, social media accounts. We want to provide full transparency on both sides before the ride is complete. Next, as a driver, you can post a ride and set your price. Or as a rider, you can search through existing rides. And then you connect and ride. All the payment and messaging is done through the app itself. So what we notice is that there is this gap in the transportation market. Of course, Lyft and Uber are good if you're getting around town. But once you get out of this 50-mile radius, that's where Swift comes in. As carpooling is becoming increasingly popular, we do have some competitors, but as you can see here, we're the only service that offers this point-to-point -point travel, flexible scheduling, as well as long distance and events-based traveling for a low price. And remember those Facebook pages that I mentioned before? We've actually been able to acquire 88 of them. We've accessed over 2 million university students who want to carpool today. So what really makes us different well, like I mentioned before, we're events-based. We help people get home on the weekends, go to concerts, festival conferences, anything like that. And we're market consolidators. We're able to aggregate all these different Facebook communities into one platform. And we compete heavily on price, because we know when you're choosing a seat, price matters. The way that it works is that we take a 15% transaction fee, and the driver sets a price, and we make sure they don't go above a legal limit. And overall, our target population is 20 million university students across the US, who on average travel about nine times per year, spending about $20 per trip. This gives us access to a market of about $3.6 billion. Our marketing strategy is two-pronged. We have the campus side, where we have campus reps, sponsor events, work with student orgs, and partner with restaurants in campus areas. And on the other side, our digital side, which is all about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and whatnot. And everything so far has been grown through organic marketing, but we plan on experimenting with paid social moving forward. And through all of this marketing, we've been able to gain some traction, been featured in a number of publications, as well as been able to grow a lot over the last few months. We've had over 6,000 rides booked, helped save a lot of CO2, as well as helped our users save almost $50,000. Our team is incredible. It's myself, Sophia, my co-founder, Justine, we have experience that spans from Cisco to Target to Wells Fargo, but we're all very passionate about solving the problem of transportation. Along the way, we've been able to gain some amazing advisors from places such as Avis, Yahoo, and UCLA. And moving into the future, we plan on expanding to universities nationwide by year three, and then eventually to young professionals by year five, which should get us up to about 3.5 million rides annually. We are swift, carpooling made easy. Thank you. Hello, we're Smart Eye Technologies, and we are saving the bees. Every year, approximately 3 million commercial beehives are trucked from state to state, sometimes from coast to coast. 
to pollinate the orchards around the country. It is a crucial link in our agriculture industry. Now, the honeybees are dying at 50% every year. Imagine a world without the bees. A third of our food would not be on our table. 80% of the commercial crops worth $600 billion would be compromised. Without the bees, a picnic like this would look like something like this, with no fruit, no vegetable, very carby. So the reason for the massive honeybee death is the varroa mite. It's a kind of mite that came into the US in the 80s. It latches onto the honeybee and sucks the blood out of it until it's dead. So the size of the, uh, of the mite is like a football compared to the human body, with the red dot uh, in that picture. And it's costing the industry $1.4 billion of loss every year. Now, to solve the problem, here at Smart Egg, we're creating two part solution. First is the Smart Indoor Apiary. It's a retrofitted shipping container where we put all the beehives inside, and it provides uh, the optimal survival environment for the beehives inside, such as the good uh, temperature, humidity, and CO2 level. And it also provides a type of organic uh, compound to kill the varroa mite with 98% of uh, efficacy in a very controllable way. And we're also providing this dashboard software that beekeepers can use it to monitor and control all the conditions in our smart apiary uh, con con uh, container. Sorry. And our performance goal is 98, 95, sorry, 98% of uh, varroa mite kill um, and less than 5% of the bee loss. So that's been tested in the laboratory, and we're creating a system to scale that up to the massive commercial operations. Now, our business model is SaaS, and we're charging $6 uh, per beehive per month. And in two to three years, our artificial intelligence module will charge $5,000 per customer per year. So our US market contains 3 million uh, commercial beehives, and it's a $700 million uh, market. And our global market contains 80 million beehives, and it's a 7.5 billion uh, per year uh, market. So our prospective customer, we're talking at the highest level of, of the wonderful company, and they have a, uh, approximately 100,000 beehives, and our uh, revenue from them will be $3 million per year. And Miller Tony Farm, uh, they have six, uh, 60,000 beehives, and our projected revenue from them is $2 million per year. And our uh, fifth year projected net income is $86 million per year. So here's our team. My name is Tim. I'm the founder. Um, I've been the project manager of the Department of Energy Project. And I have a PhD of environmental engineering from, uh, from the UCLA. And our CEO, Sophia, she has been the global food initiative of the UC uh, uh, Office of the President. Uh, and our software engineer, Brandon, uh, he just graduated uh, with the BS of computer science. We have two advisors, Ari and Michael. They're very accomplished businessmen. They've been helping us to building, uh, building our business all the way along. Smart Egg Technologies, we are saving the bees, and we need your support. Thank you very much. All right, so when you talk about a movie or a book that you read, you never say, I dodged a bullet or I beat up the bad guy. So, but with games, it's very different. So when you have, when you play a game, you are the hero. You're the one saving the world and you're the one doing the impossible. And so with VR, or virtual reality, we can get you as close as possible to being the character in the game or the story. And their reality becomes your world. And so, hi, we're Escality, a virtual and augmented reality game studio. And so I have a question for you all. How many of you have done an escape room before? Raise your hand. So like half. So an escape room, for those of you who haven't, 
is basically a real life experience where you and a couple friends can go and get locked in a room together. And you have to solve puzzles to get out. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of entertaining, but um, so what we asked about escape rooms is that, well, in real life you can't really do many of the things that you see in movies. So with virtual reality, we said, hey, what if you could cast a spell, right, to solve a puzzle rather than finding codes in the ground to unlock a lock? So we made Conjurer's Eye a magical escape room puzzle game, specifically designed for VR. And so you actually cast spells in our game to solve various puzzles throughout. And if you don't solve in time, you die. Well, you get to restart the game, but you die. Um, and so it's a fully immersive experience where you have these two controllers. And they actually are your hands. And you can manipulate the environment and grab objects and interact with the world around you. And so it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> um, we plan to release Conjurer's Eye sometime early November on a Steam VR platform and quickly porting to the Oculus and PlayStation VR system soon after. This totals to, totals to around 2 million players, potential players. And so games don't end with virtual reality. They don't just apply to virtual reality. Games also apply to augmented reality. And we're partnering with an event organizer to put on an AR, or augmented reality, scavenger hunt for events. And so people at these parties or guests, they can download an app onto their phone and go around the venue looking for various objects or items. And there are currently 2 billion compatible devices, smartphones, iPhones, iPads, that are able to do, use this sort of technology. And we believe that there's a lot of creative uses for this. We're also partnered with some UCLA researchers at the Semmel Institute for Neuroscience, Drs. Jo Joseph McGuire and Joe Yeso, to create a VR therapeutic experience to help reduce anxiety in clinical populations and help patients with OCD and anxiety disorders. So a little bit about our team. I'm Alvin. Hi. I'm the co-founder and CEO. And for the last three years, I've been working at various research labs at UCLA, studying human memory and perception using VR. These are my two co-founders, Hunter and Eric. And Hunter and I actually worked for Unity, which is a game engine that VR developers use. And we, were, we made some machine learning tools for VR developers. And Eric. He's an aerospace engineer, and he's just a really good coder. So this is the rest of our team. As you can see, we have creative talent and also technical talent. And in about 30 seconds, we're about to finish startup UCLA the Accelerator. And next week, we'll be hosting the AR scavenger hunt at the Brentwood Country Club for the client. And in a month, We'll have the VR, the first stage of our VR anxiety experiment done. In two months, we'll be releasing Conjurer's Eye to show off at various conferences like VRLA in the upcoming year. Now, from all of us at Escality, we thank you. And I think one of my teammates over there is kind of lost, getting lost in VR. <laughs> and so, <laughs> come by our booth. So we can show you what VR can do. And we dare you to escape reality. Thank you. Hi. I'd like to talk to you about something that 4 million women in the United States alone experiences every year, and that is pregnancy. If you think about a friend, sister, cousin, significant other, maybe even you yourself have experienced this, but you know that this is a time of a lot of change. And you can see she's literally going to grow out of her clothes. And this is what happened to Liz and Kim. Both Liz and Kim are moms, but what else do they have in common? Well, 
They've both spent entire life building a career, a reputation, and an image of herself. And when Liz got pregnant, she said, I still want to look and feel like myself even when I'm pregnant. Kim says, when I get dressed for work in the morning, it matters to me how I look. Turns out she's not alone. From celebrities to everyday moms on Instagram, maternity fashion is a thing. In fact, this industry has doubled in the last four years, and the days of moo-moos are gone. Women want to look stylish, but the problem happens is when they start looking for clothing, they find two challenges. One, it's really expensive to buy maternity clothing, and she only needs it for a couple months. And it takes a lot of time to find stylish, well-fitting maternity clothing. Time out of her really busy schedule with her career. Now doctor's appointments, birthing classes, basically planning for a family. And so we thought, OK, there has to be a better way. How about renting your maternity wardrobe? If you think about what women are doing today, some are borrowing, which gives her a lot of variety and is really cost effective. But she may not get really on-trend clothing and may not fit her very well, which is why people buy. But if you think about these, you're pretty mutually exclusive. Not until you think about renting does she get all of these benefits with the added convenience of someone having already vetted through the selection and the product. That being us. Bella Nova is an e-commerce website that allows her to rent her maternity wardrobe. The way it works is that she'll go online, pick what she loves, puts in her closet, when she's ready, we'll send her her first set. Every month after that, she can pre-plan her wardrobe, so now she has a new set that's a better match with a new size, basically a closet refresh. Puts the old set back in the box, ships it back to us. We want to make this super easy for her, so we take care of shipping, exchanges, dry cleaning, and when our inventory is ready for retirement, we're donating that to a women in need organization to really continue helping this ecosystem of women helping women. We have three easy membership models offering a lot of flexibility during this time, and she can actually switch between these month to month. But ultimately, we can triple her product selection at half the cost. Now that we know why this makes sense for her, why does it make sense for us? If we take an you know, economics point of view, and we take an average case customer, say she's only with us for three months, and we have her for uh, the middle tier closet, and our friends at Black Tux and Rent the Runway have given us some actuals, and if you step down for depreciation, dry cleaning, shipping, cash, we're still left with a positive contribution of 30%, which is really strong for an e-commerce business. We're targeting domestic America, where there's a dense population of working women who want to look good and feel good, giving us 345,000 women who spend over $262 million every year on maternity clothing. Now, knowing that there's a market, let's talk about the competition. There are a few. A lot of them are smaller mom and pop shops. One of the most successful is Lito. They've been around for five years, raised $50 million, and what they offer is rental for the millennial woman, a couple of accent pieces to add to her closet, and they recently opened up a maternity selection. But Galanovia is a higher end, more professionally focused selection that's meant to be a wardrobe for the maternity, uh, for the expectant mom. We have three go-to-market strategies. Um, I don't know, it's so blurry, but I promise you they look really good. These are real women who are really pregnant, and they've helped us perfect our model, our selection, and our service. And they've also helped us with our second strategy, which is social and digital media marketing. Remember Kim from earlier? This is her in our burgundy dress. She's got 144 likes up there. Here's Sarah. Here's Jasmine. And here is Becky. Women are always online looking for advice. So if you look up hashtag maternity fashion, hashtag maternity style, hashtag we're pregnant, there's a ton of different hashtags out there that lets us actually target our demographic, as well as the number of Facebook groups for mommies and Facebook influencers. So that brings us to our third strategy, which is partnerships. We're marketing, we're, sorry, we're targeting um, medical groups such as sonography offices where women are going during their pregnancy. We're working with women's organizations because we have really similar visions and missions of how to move women forward, and companies. So if you've been paying attention to the press, there's a lot of excitement around maternity and paternity benefits, right? So we're actually working with a couple of companies on having this be a company-sponsored maternity benefit. And if any of your companies would be interested in helping women look great and feel great during this time in her life, please come chat with me. I'll be back there, and we can talk about partnerships. I'm Jenny, I'm the founder and CEO. I previously owned a clothing line that was sold in Nordstrom's and Anthropology. I have Kathy who's been in marketing for over 10 years and Bryce has been in product development with Silicon Valley Startups. I graduated from UCLA Anderson this June. I quit my full-time job to pursue Bellanove. 
And our academic, or our, sorry, our advisor is Dinesh Morjani, who is the co-founder of Tinder. We're excited to tell you today that we're launched, that we, we went live today, um, but we're um, access is by invitation only, but if you let them know that you heard from us at Demo Day, I'd be happy to give her access. But Bella Nove, which translates to Beautiful Nine, is here to help her go confidently into motherhood and look great doing it. Thank you. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, is a powerful imaging technology that shows the internal structure of your body. When you go to a hospital and the doctor wants to know what is going on inside your body, he may order an MRI for you. You go to the scanning room, lie on top of an MRI scanner, a technician will put on a cage-like coil made of heavy and rigid material on or around your body. In this case, the patient is doing head imaging. The wide device surrounding the patient's head is called radio frequency coil, or RF coil. RF coil is a critical hardware device serving as the eye of the MRI, meaning receive the signals transmitted emanating from the human body and transmitted back to the MRI scanners before they are interpreted as images of the internal structure. However, patients have to, however, for patients with brain injury or long-term illness, they have to struggle their way through the rigid structure of the RF coils and suffer from the problem of claustrophobia and discomfort. And it becomes even worse when it comes to neck imaging. Tie strap is needed to fasten the heavy RF coil around the patient's neck. The patient has the feeling of being choked. A study conducted at UCLA UCLA Medical Center and the Cedar Sinai Hospital shows that 80% of the patients believe MRI is intimidating and uncomfortable. 70% of the doctors told us when the patients are not comfortable, they tend to move and the error rate increase dramatically. Wearable Lab solved these problems by using ultra flexible, lightweight material that can be worn as a casual piece of clothing. With this solution, the patients are more comfortable. The image quality can be increased. The error rates will be decreased as increasing the throughput of the hospitals. Additionally, the purchasing cost will be decreased by more than half. Professor Holden Wu from UCLA School of Medicine believes wearable lab coils can increase the, the image quality and decrease the error rate compared with the traditional RF coils. Our pilot product is a wearable RF coil for neck imaging. It is highly flexible, gently wrapped around the patient's body, patient's neck. After it's connected to the MI scanner, we're ready to do the imaging. And note here, we are not replacing the whole MI scanner, but only revolutionizing the RF coil part of it. And the patients still need to go to the MI scanner to do the imaging. Our pilot product, our final product, is a wearable RF coil for multiple regions, including the children's whole body imaging, knee imaging, shoulder imaging, wrist, ankle, neck, etc. Basically, it integrates seven different kinds of RF coils for specific imaging, specific regions into one single coil. Every year, hospitals worldwide pay $6 billion for MRI facilities. $400 million goes through our coil market. Our beach market is $20 million net coil market. We make money by selling our coils to hospitals. By charging premium price of $50,000, we have a higher profit margin. More importantly, the purchasing cost for the hospitals decreased by more than half because the number of the coils needed for the hospitals decreased by more than half. Our pilot product is expected to be in the market in three years. By the end of this year, 
will finish the system integration of the RF coils with the MI scanners. We hold a provisional patent on this technology. Next year, we'll do pilot testing in some research institutes. In year 2019, we'll get the necessary certificates for our pilot. We're currently in collaboration with Ida Sinai Hospital and UCLA School of Medicine. They will also serve as the pilot testing sites for our product. My name is Dai Song, the founder and the CEO. I'm currently a PhD candidate in UCLA Electrical Engineering Department, a former antenna design engineer at Apple. Our CEO, Stacy, is an MBA candidate at MIT Sloan, a former BCG consultant. This work is conducted at UCLA Antenna Research Analysis and Measurement Lab under the supervision of Professor Yayo Ramasamy. Wearable Lab, a wearable MRI coil solution. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Naveed, but on Snapchat my username is Naveed with two eyes. On YouTube, my username is Narveed. And on Facebook, you have to look up both my first and last name. Realistically, none of you will remember this, and you won't go on each platform separately to look me up. So I've created a platform called Acquaint that allows you to have one social media handle to connect them all. I'm not the only, on, only one with this problem. Social media influencers, content creators, and businesses are constantly sharing all of their social media platforms, such as Charles the French here. As you can see, at the end of his video, he shares all of his social media platforms with the expectation that his viewers will go on each platform separately, search for the username, and click add or follow. And realistically, no one does this. So this leads to a divide for social media influencers like Charles the French, where he's got significantly more followers on his Facebook page than he does on any of his other social platforms. So we allow you to solve this problem by generating a scannable image that you can place at the end of your videos or a clickable link that you can place in the description of those videos where people will be able to simply scan it with Snapchat, any QR code scanning app, or acquaint itself, and it'll take you to a page with all of your social profiles where from here they'll be able to click on any of the platforms they'd like to follow you on. It'll take you to the app within your phone and you can click add or follow from there. The three steps involved to creating your own acquaint profile is to one, link your profiles, two, add your scan code to any of your advertisements, your flyers, or your videos, and three, observe the growth. With acquaint, we uh, allow you to see the analytics, see how many times people are scanning the image, and see how effective it is for you. In about a week, iOS 11 will be released to every single Apple product. And in this update, they will have a QR code scanner on all Apple products. And it'll be one of the most advanced QR code scanners on the market because you'll be able to add Wi-Fi networks, add contacts to your phone, and now with Acquaint, you'll be able to add social media platforms. Companies, social media companies, are preparing for this update. And Twitter's most recent update, they had their own, so you can scan this and add me on my Twitter. You can scan this with Snapchat. They actually started this trend and add me on Snapchat. Facebook followed shortly after, and Venmo's most recent update has their own as well. But with Acquaint, all you need is one to add across everything. We're currently targeting social media influencers. Um, YouTube is the most lucrative social media platform for these influencers but they don't have nearly as many followers on their other platforms. So uh, we seek to bring those subscribers from YouTube to their other platforms so that they can make more money year round. Uh, one of the most notable influencers on Acquaint right now is ClutchPoint. Um, they have about 20 million followers across multiple different channels on Facebook. But the ClutchPoint's Instagram page only has 3,000 followers and their Twitter page only has 16,000 followers. They plan to use Acquaint um, to bring those 20 million followers to their other social handles as well. Acquaint also appeals to the average users by allowing you to post uh, a link to your Acquaint profile in the bio of your Instagram or your Twitter or your Facebook page. And when people follow you, they'll be able to click that link and have access to everything else as well. 
Um, currently, we're charging $9.99 a month um, for companies to be able to generate their own customized QR code, where they'll be able to place a scannable, uh, a co their company's image inside of the QR code and change the color of it as well. Acquaint is currently available for free on the App Store, and you can generate your own basic profile for free. You guys should all download it right now. Um, and also included in this uh, subscription is a uh, detailed analytics feature where you'll be able to uh, see how many scans uh, and acquaint profile views you're getting for the past 10 days, uh, the engagement of each of your social media handles, and the location of your viewers by city. Uh, currently, Acquaint has been working full time out of start of UCLA and will continue working um, once it ends right after this pitch. Um, and uh, we're preparing for the iOS 11 um, release, which is coming in about a week. And we're developing a fully functional web platform, which should be out in about a month. And soon after that, Clutch Points will start using it for their posts. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO. I've got product management and fintech startup experience. I just graduated UCLA. Um, our other co-founder and CTO, Austin Vidae, is a two-time NASA and Amazon intern. Um, we've got Max Wang, who's our lead software engineer, and Andy Tolstad, who is an advisor on the software engineering team. Uh, don't hesitate to take out your Snapchat and scan this image to add me on my social media so we can get acquainted. Thank you. So I'm somebody who's dealt with super difficult skin for most of my life. Also somebody who has struggled with finding skincare with ingredients I could understand. Consistently kind of having to choose between natural skincare that was just super gentle or effective skincare that was really great for my skin type but just filled with chemicals. I started making products for myself, but once I realized that this was an issue in the market, I founded Rosen. With Rosen, we're bringing clear skin and confidence to all of our customers while only using clean ingredients. My name's Jamika. I'm the founder of Rosen. I just graduated with a business economics degree, and I've been formulating products for myself, friends, and family for about five years now. If you do a quick search for a charcoal mask on Sephora's website, these are going to be some of your top results. However, when you click on their pages, those long paragraphs are actually the ingredient list. Um, whether you knew it or not, ingredients are listed by quantity, so the fact that some of these charcoal masks have charcoal as the second to last ingredient makes you wonder how much charcoal is actually in that charcoal mask. Um, at Rosen, we like to keep everything super clean, super minimal. For example, our mask only has six ingredients, leaving room for ingredients like charcoal and tea tree oil to be used at super high and effective percentages. Um, because the regulatory industry is very low with cosmetics in the U.S., we're able to follow the pathway paved by brands like The Balm, Herbivore, even Shea Moisture, and handcraft all of our products. This allows us a lot of flexibility and increased transparency with our customers. We do currently have four products three face masks and one rose water mist. All of our products are not only natural, but they differentiate from other products on the nat uh, other natural products because they're geared for acne prone skin types. So brands I'm sure you've heard of like The Honest Company have done an amazing job paving the way for this natural beauty industry and really proving its size and scale. We're stepping into that industry and serving an underrepresented demographic, people with acne prone skin. Products like our charcoal mask, for example, are great for oily skin, blackheads, uneven skin texture, things like people like myself are dealing with and can't find natural solutions for. As you can see, the natural skincare industry is a $3.2 billion market with a compounded annual growth rate of about 4.5%. Initially, we're targeting those nearly 1.5 million individuals who live in Los Angeles, already deal with difficult skin, and are checking their skincare labels. We start with Los Angeles because we're able to directly hit them offline through pop-ups, farmers markets, large events, as well as partnering with um, independent retailers, boutiques, and salons that are located here in Southern California. 
We also reach customers online, so directly through our e-commerce platform, and then indirectly through platforms like Etsy, Pinterest, Lanello. This summer, we've revenued about $2,700. By the end of this month, we'll have participated in over 20 events and been carried in four storefronts. Along the way, we've also partnered with some pretty awesome people, um, one of which is Shameless Maya, that super colorful icon up there, has a million person following between her YouTube and Instagram, been able to work with her twice and start to cultivate a pretty great relationship. Doing these online and offline tactics, we're able to meet really great customers like Olivia and Taylor, people who love how they see a drastic change in their acne in just a few weeks, or try out the charcoal mask and love how minimal but still effective our products are. So moving forward with more markets like Renegade Craft Fair, Unique LA, more partnerships like our recent pop-up at Madewell, and working with other influencers is how we plan to move forward and grow the brand within the next few years. Um, through these methods, we've landed at our projected customer acquisition cost and lifetime value, which combine to have a nice ratio of a little over three and a half. Um, these are our year one through year three projected revenues. Year one and year two is really just finding our core customer base and the best way to reach our target customer. After year two and getting the traction we expect, we do plan to take on some funding. That way we can have an increased marketing budget and really do things like work with larger influencers, host our own events, and start talk talking to larger retailers. Within five years, Rosen plans to position itself in large retail stores like Urban Outfitters, Sephora, and Nordstrom's, places that are already starting to cultivate a really indie, natural beauty section in all of their storefronts. Rosen plans to be the natural skincare company for young people, creating clear skin and confidence while only using clean ingredients. Thank you. You've all seen stethoscopes. Every doctor has one, and they are the first line of defense for the detection of heart disease. However, as you can see, they've changed very little in the last 200 years, which is a big problem because heart disease remains America's number one killer, and the conventional stethoscope is actually very bad at detecting heart conditions. Recent studies have shown that the conventional stethoscope has a 50 to 80% misdiagnosis rate. That's largely because the audio quality just isn't sufficient to hear those subtle sounds. Also, stethoscopes are dirty. They touch every part of a patient's body and are very rarely, if ever, clean. Another study showed that one third of emergency room stethoscopes have MRSA on them. That's the antibiotic resistant bacteria that hospitals freak out about. Our solution to both those problems is a little blue box that fits in the palm of your hand called the Pulsate. The idea is that you take the head off a conventional stethoscope and then convert it into a digital electronic stethoscope. The data is then streamed to your smartphone where it's conveyed to the user in real time after being filtered and amplified, giving the doctor the best possible audio and the best possible chance of making a correct diagnosis. In addition, because the data is now digital, it can be saved, reviewed, and shared. And because the device is now completely tubeless, cleaning is made easy, or you can simply use disposable heads and eliminate the need for cleaning altogether. And our device can be manufactured for less than $10, meaning we can, sort, we can sell it at a fraction of the cost of competing technologies, including conventional stethoscopes. But who would buy a Pulsate? Well, first and foremost, it would be doctors, who already spend $400 million a year, usually out of pocket, on these devices. And doctors simply want the best outcomes for their patients, and the audio quality that our device provides will enable them to do that. Also, it makes a lot of sense for specialty applications, such as remote wireless health, and also student teaching. But that's just the beginning. Hospitals will be acutely interested in our device, because it enables record keeping. Right now, a heart exam is just a checkbox, but once these recordings become part of the patient's electronic medical record, conditions can be tracked over time and consultation with specialists is made easy. Also, there are 1.2 billion visits per year to hospitals and clinics, almost every one of which involves the use of a stethoscope. So that's, that means there's 1.2 billion opportunities for disease to be given to a patient and for them to get a hospital-acquired infection, which is a big, big problem for these institutions and it can be solved instantly by using our device with disposable heads. Lastly, we think that in the long run, there will be an even larger consumer market. That's just, and that's not just the 30 million Americans living with heart disease. It's also expectant mothers, worried parents, all of whom could stand to benefit from making recordings in the comfort of their own home instead of going into the doctor's office for frequent visits. 
they can then use our app to securely transmit the information to their doctor or else send it to our servers where, we'll, where we will use machine learning techniques to evaluate those sounds and let them know whether or not a doctor's visit is warranted. Now in terms of our business model, for the doctor this would be a one-time purchase, but if we could, because we can produce them so inexpensively, we can price them competitively and still earn a 1,000% margin. For hospitals, the device will be heavily discounted because hospitals will be purchasing our uh, $1 disposable stethoscope heads, which will be our primary source of revenue from them in the long run. And for normal users, it's also a one-time purchase, but they have the option of subscribing to our service wherein our app enables them to securely transmit data to doctors and our remote servers. Now, right now, we're in alpha testing stage, but five years in the future, we anticipate we could have 10% of the global stethoscope market and 5% of hospital and clinic visits could be using our disposable heads, adding up to over $100 million in revenue. But for the short term, we'll be focusing at UCLA because we've already been developing great relationships with doctors and administrators here, and they're already be telling us, they're lining up out the door, they're telling us that they are excited to use our device. Now, we didn't invent the idea of an electronic stethoscope, but we blow the competition out of the water. Almost no other device in the market has the wireless and tubeless aspect of our invention, and no other device allows for the use of disposable heads while maintaining audio quality. Also, our device is modular. It's smartphone compatible with no additional components required, and again, we can manufacture it for $10 a piece, whereas competitors are selling theirs for anywhere between $200 and $2,000 per unit. To date, we've been working on developing our prototype, also filing our international patent earlier this year, as well as optimizing our manufacturing process. Moving forward, we're going to be rolling out our, our cross-platform software, as well as distributing our product to beta testers prior to ramping up marketing and sales next year. Here's our team. There's me and Adam. There you go. Both of us received our PhDs from UCLA in biomedical engineering earlier this year. And between the two of us, we have a diverse skill set in multiple branches of engineering, rapid prototyping, software design, and management. And then Paranaz is an MD PhD student who's going to be our link to the hospital and who also has a lot of experience in wireless device design. And Richard, a law student who's been helping us with our patent and other legal issues. Now, lastly, I'd like to share with you a recording that I made with our device earlier this week. If you'd like to hear your heart, come to our table and see a demo. We are PulseMed, revolutionizing how you hear the heart. I'm the calculator guy from earlier. <clears throat> this here is a TI calculator that I'm holding in my hand. It's a TI-84. I'm sure a lot of you in the crowd by the laughs remember it. The TI calculator's got a pixelated screen. It's clunky. It was created in the 1990s and hasn't really been changed much since. It costs an absurd $100 to $200 per calculator. And yet, for the 27th year in a row, millions of students across the U.S. will be forced to reluctantly purchase it, beating the $500 million market. And our question here at Class Calc very simply is why, right? Why are students paying such an absurd price tag on these calculators when they have literal supercomputers in their fingertips that can do so much more for so much less? The answer, as I seem to reveal already, is that these smartphones have access to things like Google and the internet, and therefore can't be used on tests. Students therefore have to buy TI calculators for test taking purposes. Our intuition is corroborated by online data, which, so, which shows that calculator apps out there have millions of downloads, the best of which even have tens of millions. But the pro versions for those same calculators have only thousands of downloads, which, with a market cap of about $450,000. This is much better than most of the other calculator apps, which end up in what I like to call the calculator app graveyard. At ClassCalc, we're closing the loop by creating the first ever mobile calculator application 
that will have a built-in management layer allowing teachers to lock students on our calculator screen, preventing them from accessing things like Google and the internet and making it safe to use on tests. Very simply, the teacher engages in test mode, the students connect, and the teacher can now monitor all her students and know who is on test mode and who is not, who's locked in on their screen and who's not. This sets us up to disrupt the industry because now we're taking a product that has been traditionally bound to outdated hardware and bringing it onto the smart platform allowing us to create a much better product that's also much cheaper. Whereas TIs would cost a high school student about $200 to have its high school experience, ClassCalc will cost $20 for a four-year subscription, which is a price reduction of 90%. The TIs are difficult to use, as, in, as is indicated by one of many examples in the infamous six-step linear regression, which I personally had to struggle with in high school. On the other hand, ClassCalc is intuitive, with all of its functionality available right at your fingertips on both the scientific and graphing calculator. The TI is also bound to its hardware in that it can't be updated remotely. And conventionally, this has led to students having to buy different calculator models to suit different classroom environments. One such student might have to buy a $120 TI-84, which is standard in high school. And then in his college chemistry class, which bans the TI-84s, he might have to buy a TI-36. And then if he takes upper div finance, engineering, or stats courses, he might have to shell out about 300 bucks on calculators. And this is making the very unsafe assumption, right, that he hasn't lost or broken a calculator along the way. ClassCalc, on the other hand, is super flexible, providing a student with any of the functions he would ever need in any of his classes, and giving teachers the control over what functions are allowed on what tests. And this creates sort of one-size-fits-all type of calculator, which feeds very nicely into the idea of a tipping point in the calculator industry, where teachers want one calculator used across all of their classrooms, so that they don't have to teach students different layouts for different classrooms. And ClassCalc, because of its unprecedented flexibility, can reach this tipping point and become the new calculator industry standard. Our sales strategy is quite simple. The base calculator is free to get those millions of downloads I spoke about earlier. And test mode will come at a $5 yearly subscription for students. And that can be paid either by the students individually or by the school in bulk. And then comes my favorite, the TI buyback program, which is sort of two birds with one stone. If you like class calc, you could turn in your calculator to us and we'll give you a lifetime membership. And we would then go and sell those TI calculators into rapidly converting secondary markets. <laughs> Currently, we're in the midst of technical development. It's been an awesome experience here at Startup UCLA. And we plan to launch our beta at two of the local pioneering high schools in the area called Yuba and Shalhevet in November. In January, we will then engage in a controlled rollout and by March, we will move to a full launch. What this means is that we'll make ClassCalc publicly available, and we will launch with 100,000 students in Los Angeles County through Illuminate Education, an online educational student platform that is used actively by 5 million students across our country. These seeds will then be sown when we move from a school-by-school -school conversion to a district-by-district -district conversion, starting with LAUSD and its 750,000 students, then iterating through the same process to make it through California and eventually the entire of the US. We have big goals here at ClassCalc, and one of them is BYOD, which is an emerging industry, and it means bring your own device. Basically, schools have made a lot of promises about buying students certain technologies, such as Chromebooks and iPads and whatnot, but have had to scale back due to proposed budget cuts and are now looking for a more cost-effective solution. The most promising of which is this idea where students bring their own device and another product, a trusted product that's already being used by millions, something like ClassCalc, could provide the management layer to make sure that students are focused during class and not cheating during tests. The natural next step would be to roll out a test making and test taking platform complete with analytics that would provide feedback on scales ranging from students' performance throughout the entire year to the specific repetitive error that students have been making on their math problems. And lastly, foreign markets. There are 750 million students out there. And since math is universal language, the barrier to entry to these markets are relatively low. A bit about me. I'm the founder of ClassCalc. My name is Daniel Heim. I got a bachelor's in neuroscience here at UCLA. I've been a tutor for the last 10 years. I'm definitely a calculator and math geek. And I'm well connected with LAUSD through the nonprofit I created here at UCLA called The Bruin Experiment. This is my team. That's from left to right, Ajay, Bhavadeep, Varsha, Ming, and Ege. 
and they're awesome engineers, and we're building this together. And we are ClassCalc, the classroom calculator of the future. Better, cheaper, and safe to use on tests. Thank you. Over 3 million patients begin orthodontic treatment each year in the United States alone. And they still use the same technology that has been used for over 80 years. That is the traditional brace that you see here. This involves a manual process where you have to go to the orthodontist every four to six weeks. You do manual wire bending and adjustment. And you go home with a lot of pain. And mechanodontics are making a new type of braces, which is revolutionizing orthodontic treatment. Our braces, as you can see here, consist of a stabilizing bar with individual arms which connect to each tooth. This allows us to move the teeth independently. Currently with traditional braces, when you have a wire connecting the nearby teeth, when you move one tooth, you have side effects on the nearby teeth. What this does is causes a very long treatment time due to inadvertent movement of those teeth. Also, we move all the teeth simultaneously. With traditional braces, it's often the case that one or only a few of the teeth are being moved and the rest are stationary. Also, our device is made of nitinol. Nitinol is a shape memory alloy that is ideal for orthodontic treatment because it provides a light and constant force on the teeth. I want to show a demo here. What we have is what's called a wax typodont. It's used in residency. And what you see here is a simulation for a case where there's severe anterior crowding. And it's also an extraction case. So this is a very severe case in orthodontics. So this video here gives you an idea of how the braces work in the patient's mouth. So this fixes the treatment of the patient's uh, metal occlusion with one device. With traditional braces, you'd have to go 20 times to get this fixed. Here's how the process works. You go to the orthodontist, they take an intraoral scan of your mouth. That digital file is sent to us, and we make the braces. We send the braces back to the orthodontist, and they simply install it in the patient's mouth. No manual work is needed by the orthodontist. No manual wire bending, nothing. The advantage that we have for the patient is, number one, a drastic reduction in treatment time. Number two, a drastic reduction in the number of visits you have to take the orthodontist. Also, our braces can be placed behind the teeth, which are aesthetically more pleasing. Furthermore, as you might have noticed in the previous uh, image, you can easily floss with our braces, since there's no wire that connects the nearby teeth. Also, we're able to reduce the pain dramatically because we're able to provide a light and constant force throughout treatment. From the point of view of the doctor, we give them numerous advantages as well, first and foremost being a reduction in chair time. This is the main thing that drives their cost at the clinic. Also, we're able to increase their profit because of reduction in chair time and also reduction in the number of times you have to see the patient to complete treatment. Furthermore, we will expand the market. So we're currently doing clinical testing. Um, here's a photo of the upper jaw of one of our patients. And here's a photo of the lower jaw. And uh, you can see that uh, these all three photos were taken at the same time. So actually, she just finished treatment uh, a couple weeks ago, a uh, day or two before her birthday. And uh, we're actually looking for additional patients as well. So you know, the other product milestones, we established our MVP in quarter two of last year. We started the clinical trial at the beginning of this year and completed our first patient a few weeks ago. We also uh, automated the design of our, our braces. In terms of market size, three million patients begin orthodontic treatment each year in the United States. The average price is approximately $5,000 for a $15 billion US market, and much bigger worldwide. Our main competitor, as I've already mentioned, is traditional braces. They have only over 90% of the market. Next competitor is lingual braces. These are behind the teeth braces, which are the same technology as traditional braces, but are placed behind the teeth. They haven't gotten any really market adoption because it's very difficult for the orthodontist to do the manual wire bending behind the patient's teeth. The other competitor which is uh, getting more popular these days is aligners. So Invisalign is the biggest company in this area. They have over a $13 billion market cap. Um, they have around 7% of the market. And the reason they haven't been able to expand more is for two reasons. Number one, they can only treat very simple cases. And number two, for teenagers, they haven't been able to get really any market adoption uh, because teens don't wear the aligners as much as they're supposed to. In terms of business model, we sell directly to the orthodontist for $1,500, which is similar to the price of Invisalign. And they mark that up and sell it to the patient. So we uh, filed our non-provisional patent at the end of last year, which incorporated three provisional patents. Our patent has mainly two parts. One, the general uh, design of the appliance, which moves the teeth individually. And secondly, our manufacturing process. 
that actually the type, the design that you saw there cannot be made uh, these days in traditional orthodontics with night mill. Also completed our FDA testing and won a few competitions here at UCLA uh, and we're also recently uh, accepted into Y Combinator and, and deferred that until uh, next year, beginning of next year. So for the team, it's myself. I have a background in math and engineering. My co-founder, Mehdi, uh, is a resident here at UCLA. He was a professor of orthodontics back in Iran and also have his PhD in biophysics from Johns Hopkins University. Going forward, I hope to begin our 100th patient by the beginning of next year. He'd have to get approval a few months later, which will then put us in a position to start with a controlled rollout and then go for full launch. So we have the booth in the back. We're looking for additional patients to enroll in our trial. We're looking for more complex cases. So if you're interested, stop by and uh, answer any questions you have. Thanks. Hello everyone, let's start off by rewinding back to the year 1970. As exemplified by my father here, these were the times of unflattering mustaches and shorts that were probably way too short. But these were also the times without modern computers in each classroom and before the internet was the primary source of information. Now let's fast forward about 40 years to the year 2010. As a 10th grade student struggling in my trigonometry class, I naturally turned to my father for help who somehow managed to acquire his PhD in mechanical engineering since his mustache days. Unfortunately, however, the way that he learned the material decades prior was completely different from the way that I was learning it in class, which led to much frustration and confusion at home. Now, if I could actually go back in time, I would implement TutorFly, which is a peer-to-peer -peer tutoring platform that pairs high school student tutors with younger students in the same community in need of tutoring. So parents log on to tutorfly.org, and they can filter by subject, class, and teacher in order to find a tutor that's just recently completed the same exact class as the parent's child. All sessions take place in person at a location of, the, of both parties choosing, and all communication goes directly through our messaging feature of our platform so that we don't have to exchange any personal private information between the two users as well. As we like to explain the other current tutoring options, we do have crowded tutoring centers out there, ineffective online platforms, and expensive individual tutors. But with each day that passes, all these options are continually being outdated by changes in the classroom. So by using high school students as our tutors, we make sure that the content that's delivered is always current and up to date. The tutoring industry is actually quite large. So in the US alone, it's worth upwards of $11 billion. Globally, it's worth upwards of $100 billion. So the group that's able to effectively bridge the disconnect between the classroom learning environment and outside academic help can really disrupt the space. In order to recruit our high school age student tutors, we partner with the California Scholarship Federation and National Honor Society chapters at various high schools. These are academically based service groups and we select about 20 students from each of those schools through our four step vetting process. The first step being simply that the student has to have at least a 3.5 GPA, which is already a requirement to be a part of those organizations. We then outsource interviews to the officers of the clubs who test for creativity, knowledge, and empathy. Third, we make sure our applicants have at least three teacher recommendations from teachers in the past. And finally, we put on an in-person tutor fly orientation for those applicants. Our customer acquisition costs are quite low, so down from about a dollar to where they're currently at at 50 cents. And that's largely due to our move towards organic word of mouth marketing. We post on Nextdoor, the online parent network, quite frequently, and that's been working pretty well for us. We also have forged strategic local partnerships with charities and also those school organizations that we talked about earlier. We have one main flagship revenue stream and others that we're testing out as well. The first being a simple commission-based revenue stream. So parents pay $20 through our platform, we get $8 as our revenue, and the remaining amount, that $12, goes directly to the student tutor as his or her personal income. However, the unique thing here is that most of our tutors actually elect not to get paid. They'd rather receive community service hours towards their hours requirements. So then we donate that money to a local charity, which of course helps the local charity in the community and also contributes greatly to our positive company image. We also tested out a recurring revenue stream this past summer by deploying our TutorFly tutors at local summer school programs in order to assist the students that have previously failed and need to repeat basic academic classes such as Algebra 1. Through this, we were able to drastically decrease the student to teacher ratio from 20 to 1 to 7 to 1 at a fraction of the cost of hiring an additional teacher or paraeducator. 
So on one hand, we saved the school districts a great deal of money, and on our end, we also established a more consistent revenue stream during the summertime as well. In the future, we look forward to implementing video chat into our platform. This will convenience our current users, but also allow us to strategically expand by using our TutorFly tutors here in California to service communities outside of the state as well. We will also be hosting TutorFly academic camps during school breaks. And finally, we will be working closely with university admissions offices in order to help them contact our tutors and 2Ts who are potential applicants and hopefully entrants into those very same universities. By the end of October, we will be expanding to 10 schools in those local communities. On average, our users schedule three sessions. We've completed over 250 sessions to date, and 80% of our users who schedule one session also schedule a follow-up session with our TutorFly tutors. My name is Parsa Resvani. I'm the founder and CEO of TutorFly. My co-founder, Ryan, and I have been working together for about seven months now. We're proud graduates of the Y Combinator Startup School, and after tonight, we'll be alumni of the Startup UCLA Accelerator program as well. Our team is quite unique in that we're 20 university students between the ages of 19 and 25, attending schools such as UCLA, UC Berkeley, and Duke, and we also work for companies including Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. So on behalf of our TutorFly team and our tutors, we thank you for your time and hearing about TutorFly, the perfect tutor for every classroom and every student. Thank you.